And there's my inlay. Pretty, no? <laughs> So, fun times. Let us get fretboard leveling file. Nice coarse file. Could use a leveling beam as well. Although that's not as coarse. It depends on how much finishing you are prepared to do or are willing to do on your fretboard. Okay, at this stage I don't really want to get file marks. I can take that down a little bit more. Let me get a file in a handle. I'm trying not to touch the fretboard. this stage. Leveling beam. coming together. Yeah, his face basically disappeared. So going in with the scalpel blade. Follow his out the outline of his snout here. We do inlay powders. Blue in first. Aluminium. And then you do the same thing. Oh, I love that. I love the look of that. And I'm just going to build it up again. <laughs> yeah, that's my lid. I'm having a bad day. I'm dropping things all over the place. Okay, I'm going to leave that to cure for a little while. And I'm going to trust that that is working as I expect it to. And uh, I'm going to highlight his toes here in the same way. There we go. Useful if I can find it. And then there we go. And then <laughs> probably should wear gloves. We're doing that, but hey. Get it with some silver photo. And I'm going to go with a... Uh, with a living fire. And see where we end up. It's probably going to need... Uh, a couple of applications to get something that looks right. Yeah, we've, we've completely lost his eye. So the eye was there. If I wanted a cartoon eye, I'd just drill a hole. But uh, I like 
the organic look that we had. I'm going to use some gunmetal grey inlay powder. Slightly sparkly. So after all that, I'm, I'm really unsure about these feet. And this is something that uh, happens a lot. Well, turns out I'm just not happy with this. I'm back. I've slept on it. I don't like the snout and uh, pause of this instrument. It's not an instrument, it's an inlay. And uh, as such, I'm going to teach you uh, the next best thing, which is fixing your mistakes as you go along. And uh, essentially, I now have four little things that I need to inlay rather than uh, just one big thing that needs to be inlaid. And it's exactly the same process. Here we go. So we're going back in, recutting out the toes. I'm going to stick with the same material as the lower half of the, uh, of the inlay. I've picked up a different inlay jig. Onto the muzzle. There we go, a little bit of tidying up. So, you start off in exactly the same way. Take your piece of inlay mark around it. So I'm using a 2mm cutter now. Just need to set the depth correctly. As long as the new inlay matches the old inlay, I can just copy that. That's pretty good. So, rinse and repeat. Here we go. And the process hasn't changed at all from when you were inlaying the big one. Once you have this figured out, once you can create holes that are roughly the right dimension and shape, you can do inlay of any complexity you could want. Which is pretty awesome, no? Okay, again, because, well, I'm in a bit of a rush. I'm going to get the ebony and use that to uh, 
to make the super glue cure without uh, going white as sometimes happens with the accelerator. The question that remains now is do I stop or do I carry on and uh, do some engraving or, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the original plan was to emphasize each of these joins with some uh, inlay powder. So in order to see what that would look like, and I suspect it's going to be better. Yeah, because it needs to look more even. If I had spent, uh, what, say another two hours on this, I would have uh, been able to get the joins absolutely perfect so there's no gaps. And uh, that's fine, except that wasn't the plan. Decision made, I think that looks better. And. Uh, means I need to get engraving really which is uh, another job with the Proxon with a small dental burr I suppose. I have a sub one mil so it's probably a three quarter of a mil dental burr in here. This is now just free handing which is quite scary. One of the things that you don't really get a feel for until you're doing it is that uh, because there is a joint between each of these pieces, the, the router does want to follow that, which makes it slightly easier. And there we are. I've gone around a couple of times, made it slightly, slightly deeper, uh, only broke one bit. Now, I'm going to be tapping in aluminium powder because it looks great. And uh, if you cover your finger masking tape, it, it makes the whole process slightly less permanent, for yourself at least. So there we go. I was thinking gunmetal grape, but uh, in the end um, aluminium powder, because it just looks awesome. Same process as, uh, as before, we flood the cavity with super glue. The reason for doing the glue first is that if you put powder in and the glue doesn't penetrate all of the powder, you end up with uncured inlay underneath. And that is not, not good. Because that might crumble and uh, once you've put the frets in, etc., you have, you have problems that are difficult to sort out. <clears throat> One of the other things is I probably should, to be honest, be doing this with epoxy. Uh, the reason I'm not is, well, there are two reasons. One, I'm filming and am impatient and just want to see this done. And two, the epoxy that I have has uh, gone off, i.e. it's decided to stop curing, which is not, not ideal. <laughs> that doesn't look good. That looks like a total mess now. And after all that, we've only used about half of what's in what's in this vial. Uh, There's a surprisingly long way for such a small container. Yeah, that looks to me like all of the cavities are full. I don't think we've got any that are below the level of the fretboard. I'm just going to hit it with some wicking super glue quickly to make sure that we don't have any dry patches of powder anywhere. And 
and then finally the whole inlay is going to be revealed. That's cured. So with epoxy we would get a much more even mix. And I wouldn't really have to worry about dry spots. We also get a lot longer cure times. Then the super glue. Hmm. Well, there we go. I'm really rather happy with that. So as you go around, all the different pieces shine at different times or angles, sorry. And uh, yeah, that's pretty awesome. I'm going to sand her away and cut some frets loss quickly. Uh, get some frets in and you will see the finished result. Unless I change my mind about it, I mean, of course. <laughs>